United States launch vehicles have historically favored clean, sequential staging. From Saturn V to the Falcon 9, rockets typically shut down one stage separate and then ignite the next. This conventional approach, known as cold staging, ensures mechanical simplicity and thermal safety. But it comes with trade-offs, thrust gaps, added complexity from separation hardware, and inefficient coasting phases. On the other side of the world, Soviet engineers solved the same problem differently. They designed rockets like the R-7 and Proton to ignite their next stage while still attached to the previous one using open lattice structures and hot gas shielding. This method, called hot staging, kept thrust continuous through separation, boosting performance and removing the need for auxiliary ullage motors. For decades, it remained a signature of Russian and Chinese rocket design. Today, in a striking twist, that Soviet concept is being reborn on the most advanced launch vehicle ever built. SpaceX has now implemented Soviet-style hot staging on Starship, and the results could fundamentally change how future super-heavy rockets are designed. In this video, we'll explore what hot staging is, how Starship does it, and why it might mark a turning point in spaceflight engineering. But before we go further, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss upcoming videos about the evolving space industry. Starship, as designed by SpaceX, is already ambitious. It's fully reusable, over 120 meters tall, and designed to lift over 100 metric tons to orbit. But even at that scale, incremental improvements in efficiency matter. That's where hot staging comes in. Traditionally, rockets like Falcon 9 shut down the booster completely before igniting the upper stage. During that brief transition, the vehicle coasts, losing thrust and burning more fuel to counter gravity. Hot staging eliminates that pause. Instead, Starship's super-heavy booster throttles down its engines, but keeps a few firing, while the six vacuum-optimized Raptors on the second stage ignite just before separation. The upper stage then pushes off the booster using its own exhaust. The rocket never stops accelerating. To make this possible, SpaceX had to redesign the interface between the stages. Early Starship boosters were fitted with a 1.8-meter-tall interstage ring, a vented structure topped with a steel dome. This adapter allows the upper stage engine plumes to vent upward safely, avoiding damage to the booster. The ring has large openings to channel out the intense plasma and is shielded to survive the heat until separation. This method proved successful during recent test flights, where 30 of Super Heavy's 33 engines shut down, while the three center engines throttled down to maintain stability. At the same time, all six of Starship's vacuum raptors ignited, sending flames through the vented interstage. The stages then cleanly separated mid-burn. This sequence was confirmed on Flight 9, where hot staging provided a critical boost during the transition. The engineering benefits are substantial. Most obviously, hot staging increases payload capacity. Elon Musk has estimated that eliminating the thrust gap could improve Starship's payload to low Earth orbit by roughly 10%, potentially lifting an extra 10 metric tons per flight. On a rocket this size, that gain is economically transformative. With continuous thrust, the vehicle also avoids the need for ullage motors, small rockets that settle fuel before engine ignition. Instead, acceleration alone keeps propellant at the bottom of the tanks. That means fewer parts, less weight, and lower risk. Starship's ascent profile also becomes more efficient. There's no coasting period, so aerodynamic drag is slightly reduced, and the guidance system has a smoother trajectory to manage. The upper stage gains a small but meaningful velocity increment at staging, improving its chances of achieving orbit even in marginal scenarios. Operationally, hot staging introduces new efficiencies as well. With more payload per launch, SpaceX can reduce the number of flights required for complex missions. For example, its Artemis lunar architecture depends on dozens of Starship tankers to refuel a lunar lander in orbit. A 10% gain per flight could mean fewer tankers, fewer launches, and tighter mission timelines. It also improves reusability. Early boosters jettisoned the 20-ton hot stage ring after the boost-back burn, lightening the booster for descent. 
the reduced mass helps conserve fuel and reduces stress on landing legs and engines. Newer Block II versions integrate the vented section into the main structure, streamlining recovery. Flight data has shown that with the ring installed, the booster can flip into a high drag orientation during re-entry. This slows descent significantly, lowering fuel needs for the landing burn. As a result, more of the vehicle's propellant can be used for ascent rather than recovery, indirectly increasing payload again. But the system is not without risks. Igniting engines while the stages are still attached creates extreme thermal and mechanical loads. The engine exhaust engulfs the top of the booster in hot plasma, requiring robust shielding and precise engineering. SpaceX fitted the inner stage with heat-resistant steel, purging systems and multiple venting paths to control gas flow. Still, this is one of the most challenging parts of Starship's staging system. NASA had to run supercomputer simulations with over 500 million fluid cells to model the plume dynamics and thermal environment accurately. There's also mechanical complexity. The clamp mechanisms must release cleanly while exposed to blast forces. On earlier flights, the ring detached unexpectedly, demonstrating how dangerous this phase can be. Any slight thrust asymmetry or exhaust blockage could destabilize the vehicle. The timing must be perfect. If a single Raptor engine misfires during the overlap, it could induce torque, damage the structure, or cause loss of control. SpaceX has addressed these issues with staged ignition sequencing and redundant controls, but the margin for error remains small. Despite the difficulty, the payoff is real. Never before has a rocket of this size used hot staging. Not even the Soviet Union attempted it at this scale. For Starship, it means becoming the first fully reusable super-heavy rocket to benefit from a continuous thrust staging system and the implications are broad. For deep space missions, this means larger habitats, more fuel, and greater safety margins. For commercial launches, it improves cost per kilogram metrics, making Starship more competitive against expendable rockets. For NASA's Moon and Mars goals, it means a more capable and flexible transport system. Hot staging also reinforces SpaceX's philosophy of rapid iteration. Unlike traditional aerospace programs that avoid risk, SpaceX accepts failure as part of the process. The company implemented the hot staging adapter just months before Flight 2, tested it in flight, and refined the system in real time. NASA, now closely partnered with SpaceX for Artemis missions, has taken notice. Its own engineers contributed analysis to the design, recognizing the potential impact of this innovation. Analysts from Wired, Aviation Week, and beyond have acknowledged that even partial flight successes prove the concept is viable. Ultimately, Starship's use of Soviet-style hot staging represents more than just a performance boost. It reflects a shift in how we approach rocket design, blending historic techniques with modern capabilities. Instead of a clean separation, SpaceX chose a more aggressive but more rewarding approach, and it appears to be paying off. In the coming years, as hot staging becomes routine for Starship, we may see its influence spread. New super-heavy vehicles could adopt similar designs. Missions once considered marginal could become feasible. And SpaceX's ability to deliver more payload per flight could reshape the economics of space. If Starship succeeds with hot staging as a standard procedure, it won't just be a technical win. It will mark the return of a powerful idea, one that started with Soviet engineers, but has now been scaled up for the future of human spaceflight. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.